We're adding stitches to the end of the row today and crucially I've got two methods for you. You may need one or the other depending on where you are in your knitting um, and depending on what the pattern says. If you go through this and even practice it for yourself, it'll just give you an idea of which method might work when. Let's get straight to it. Let's add stitches to the end of a row. So the first thing is to use the loop cast on, which is extremely simple. It means that you won't see the cast on of those stitches quite so obviously than if you do it the second way but you may lose count of your stitches, that's the only problem with this. Let me just show you this here. So you're going to take hold of the yarn that you are going to use next for your next stitch, so that it's attached to the knitting right here at the end of the row. So you're going to hold that in your left hand and keep hold of the knitting in your right hand. So there we go. Now you're gonna move your thumb underneath that yarn Pull it up and the needle goes into the yarn at the end here, there. And you just hold on to that and keep it on the end of the needle. You do the same thing again. Thumb goes underneath that yarn and you pull the right hand needle into that stitch and you make that stitch. So we're going to make 10 stitches at the end here, so that's two already. Thumb goes underneath and the needle goes into that stitch. Thumb goes underneath, and the needle goes into that stitch, that's four. Ten. So those are ten stitches at the end of the row. Let us knit those and I'll show you how you might just lose count of those stitches as you start knitting. So we lose, we start, we start knitting as you would normally. So let's start knitting into those stitches. So one, two, see that stitch almost came off the end of the needle, so be careful, because it's only held by that single loop. Three, four, Five, keep your finger on the next stitch as you knit into the one that's at the end. And you see that yarn is getting a little bit loose there. So just keep evening it out as you go along. And this could be purling as well. It doesn't have to be a knit row, it could be a purl row. There we go. Have we kept them all? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, we have. So I will knit all the way to the end of this row and I will see you and we will add stitches to the end of that row. Okay, so if we're going to add stitches to the end of this row, let's say we add another 10, what we can do is a conventional cast on. And for that method, what we need to do is turn the knitting over. So the stitches are on the left hand needle as if we were casting on in the normal sense of casting on. The problem with casting on from here is that a lot of cast ons, when you add the stitches to the right hand needle, you need two threads of yarn. That means adding another thread of yarn here, which means weaving in ends, which means securing it, which means the stitches could end up loose. This one that we did here was really the only option if you wanted to add the stitches to this needle. So what we're going to do is add them to the left hand needle, which means turning it over. So now we're going to use the cable cast on method. So we put the right hand needle in between the previous two, the last two stitches on the needle here. So now we knit. So the yarn goes, the needle goes in between those two stitches, the yarn goes around, pull that loop through, and from the front, not from the back, from the front we put that stitch onto the left hand needle. Let's do 10 adding on as we did before. One, two. The needle goes in between the previous two stitches, yarn goes around, pull that loop three, and that's number three. In between the two stitches, yarn goes around, pull that loop through, and that's number four. And ten. 
So what we have here is that's the original knitting up until that point there. And then we have five stitches and five stitches, I think. Yes, we do. Okay, so I'm going to knit these just like I did with the others. And you can see how it looks. I've just got those two sorted out at the end there. See how that looks. So both of those methods work. That one is slightly looser and we can not see much of the casting on. But here we can see very much that that is a very even, very obvious casting on along the edge there. So yeah, it doesn't matter which one you use, whichever works for you. Now, this is how you could um, knit up a cardigan or a jumper for a doll if you like. Um, looks like a brilliant tunic doesn't it? Like a little apron even. So um, just knit some sleeves and then uh, repeat and sew them together and you're done. So great, you now know two methods on how to add stitches to the end of the row. And one of them was adding stitches to the beginning of the row. That's how it felt. And actually I prefer that option. I do that myself most usually. Especially if it includes a seam that I'll be sewing up so you won't see the uh, casting on there. If you'd like to find all of my jargon videos in one place, there's obviously the playlist here on YouTube, but I also have a download for you if you'd like that. It's a digital download. You can add it to your smartphone, your tablet, even your computer, and you just click on the link inside the PDF and it will send you straight to YouTube or my blog. You decide how you want to view the video and it's got all of the jargon videos, all the abbreviation videos and st stuff like this too. Adding stitches to the end of a row isn't exactly an abbreviation, but it's still something that we need to get our head around and we need to work out. It's a jargon video as far as I'm concerned. So do download that. The link is in the description below. And of course, do subscribe and click on the little bell too. That will mean that whenever I upload a new video, then you'll be notified by YouTube. Great. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Take care. Happy knitting.